you are an explosion. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. We're your hosts, Carly Bird. And I'm Thomas Aarons. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's something a wee bit different. We uh, switched roles. So hopefully, if all of our side cameras are working this week, you can see behind Carly is the lovely um, black lit Spirits and Ghost Stories logo um, that you can actually see the whole thing. For me, it was Spirits and Ghost Stories. So now you can actually see His it. His big old head blocked it. Yeah, my big it. head kind of blocked it. it. <clears throat> so we kind of switched things up a little bit. Uh, but that's not all we're switching up on this really cool episode because this is week 20. What does that mean, Tom? Well, I'm not very good at math, so people have to help me out. But I'm pretty sure that's five months. Yeah. This stupid, crazy little thing and this amazing display, five months, baby. That's pretty cool. So I um, can't believe we've done it almost on a weekly basis for the past five months. The only week we missed was Thanksgiving. Yeah, and that was planned. It's that, not like yeah, it was a mistake yeah, or anything. Yeah, I was. That's the weird part. It was it's planned, and then it's funny. It's like when you when you sometimes we pre-tape, and when we pre-tape an episode, it's like weird because like we we pre-tape. We feel like we're missing something. We're but like, wait we're a not. Wait a minute. We're oh, we smart. forgot to do something this week. Oh no, we didn't. It's our. We've already had like two. Yeah. Sitting Isn't around waiting to upload. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> so speaking like, because we're continuing with the Christmas theme, how have you been with everything getting ready for Christmas? Because, you know, by the time we're recording this, it, it's going to come out um, the second to last Thursday before Christmas. Hold on. Yeah, it's going to be the next to last. So this episode will be coming out on December 16th, that Thursday. And right. so we're a week, we're two weeks away. Yeah, damn, we're two weeks away from Christmas. Next next week is basically the the the... The walk walk to Christmas. Or less than two Christmas. weeks from Christmas. Yeah, that's crazy. I know. You got all the gifts ready for everybody? Yeah, I have all the gifts ready. One is one more is on its way, and when it gets here, uh, all I have to do is wrap it. But, you know, you've seen under the tree. You know what's coming. She's done a great job with her tree, like an amazing job. Um, with my tree. Well, I, I liked how we went with a smaller tree this year. It's not. It's not our tree. Okay, it's our my tree, tree. Our tree. Our tree. Semantics. The point is, mm. I liked how we went with that smaller tree, like that you could actually. We went with a super small tree, like literally less than three feet tall. No, this is not. The no, tree. this is not the. This tree. is the backup tree. This is tree. not the one we're talking. About. We're talking about our tree upstairs, that literally needed like 12 ornaments and one string of lights was more than enough to make it look mm -hmm. all decked out so <laughs> but it's it's really quaint. it's cute it's, it's quaint. very cute. yeah you can yeah. actually we set it up right next door our mind. couch near our tv it's up out of the way the dog can't get to it um and it's like it goes with the house like it doesn't sometimes people get a christmas tree like i remember um when i was in loudon county this past week and this person had in the back of their truck it looked like he cut it down from the forest <gasps> and it was like 10 feet tall it's yeah. insane and it's like something like that i almost feel like the tree is so big it sucks the oxygen out of the room it doesn't complement it you know unless not, your room is that big not trying to be an interior unless designer, you live in a mansion yeah yeah so i actually thought like oh yeah everyone's like oh you went with a too small tree because like all my parents were students were like ah you, your tree's too small so you go we went with it. to me it's like ah, it's like rude it it's Them nice fighting words it's nice for the size of the room we have you know what i mean um but yeah so i got a little bit more christmas shopping to do um for who we got we got vicky done who's yes. my aunt i wanted to get my mom something little like little little like super little um like how little you exist tell me more yeah like like not fifty dollars type of deal get your mother something i want to get her something well, that's too. really sweet of you um, to try to get my mom something i know her so birthday's sure. coming up too literally that's two well, days after about christmas to do like so a, like I was cool. trying to figure something. I wanted to get her a massage, but you said not to do that. But I thought we'll that was see. cool. We'll see, Tom. Don't give it away. She listens to these podcasts sometimes. Does she? Yeah, she listens to this one. That'd be awesome. That'd be impressive. Because, hey, look at this. There's a little reward system mm. for her. Like, oh, she can. Mm -hmm. This is where we like, synonize the days we have off. So, Penny, if you're listening, <laughs> uh, if you want to know what, if you know what days we have off and when we can come over, listen to the podcast every episode and we'll drop hints of our work <laughs> schedule. This is a good incentive. <laughs> Um, do you have all your shopping done? Yes, I just said yes. I wasn't listening because I was thinking I about you crap I, I need to get you Penny and my mom done. Um, how's work been? 
because I felt like I've not been able to talk to you for a while. I really don't think our viewers want to hear anything about my job. I think they do, because I don't think you even told them what you do. They all know I'm a sign language interpreter. Yeah, but that you actually get to work from home. But she has to be locked in a room, by the way, and you actually can't, you know, when you're in there, you're in there. It's I like interpret the void. phone calls. Yes. And it's hours and hours at a time. And and she loves her job. You can tell. She has that Viet, like that ex, she served in Vietnam look on her face. And like we're making her re- re- reminiscent about that stuff. So I love my job. I uh, get to work with kids. Uh, you know, not that big a deal. Aaron's baseball right now. It's a little crazy right now because like you got half the kids like are leaving town because it's Loudoun County. So they get like three weeks off. So it's so weird. Like there's a weird parody that you get to see. It's like half the kids are leaving town. Like, I have a couple that are going to Florida, a couple that are going to California. Lucky. Um, But then you got this other group that gets to stay. So the nice thing, though, is that means I get to stack my schedule so I don't have to drive 90 minutes one way every single day, which mm-hmm. I am so looking forward to the next couple of days. And I get all of next weekend off to do all the parties we have, which is amazing. I have to, like, go every day this week, pretty much, besides back Friday. Back-to-back parties because we're yeah. that popular. Oh, yeah, we're super no, popular. No, it's just because my family is that big. Oh, yeah, but then, like, Vicky, too. We get to see her, which is going to be amazing. She throws, like, the best parties ever. I know. I and her food's and amazing. And since we got to do this, since we have so many people in, I think they call it the fancy words, equestrian world, listening to this podcast. Is now. that how they say it? I think it's equestrian. Equestrian. In French, yes. Mm. But I'm just going to say amount of gaming. Um, that are now listening to our podcast. I got to ask you, how was Gambler's Choice? Pairs? How the fuck do you say it? Well, we call it Popsicle Pairs, but it was a gambler's choice okay. version of Popsicle Pairs. And that was at Prince George's Equestrian Center, right? Yep. Happened out in Marlboro, Maryland, which meant I had to drive on the Beltway, which was terrifying, with a truck and trailer. So, I've only been driving a truck and trailer for a year. And by the way, for our Great Britain fans, this is kind of important because um, and you, you've been over there. Like, I think their rigs... And our rigs are a little different. So she's driving a tank. They have lorries. So, yeah, okay. So she's driving a f- old a 2006 Ford F- F-350 Dually diesel with a gooseneck two-horse yeah. trailer. Yeah, it's so a she's, straight load. She's got a, she got a tank going down the thing. So it's not like one of those little ute, little... Uh, yeah, like I basically feel like I have to s- suck in my breath to fit in the lanes half the time. I'm like, <gasps> got to get skinny here. And so you had to go from Hagerstown fit. to where? To basically... Baltimore? It, no, it was closer to D.C., to be honest. Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. And you did that all by yourself? Yeah. Nobody was there? No. You are a complete equine woman now. You did it all by yourself. Yeah. Remington got that. Maybe that's why Remington was so good it for you. Terrifying. You found Jesus. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it was terrifying. I've never driven on roads like that before by myself. Mm-hmm. it's different when you have somebody like in the passenger seat that can be like hey you're you know your exit's coming up here look alive and being like okay is there anybody over in that lane no okay you can get over versus me just being like in control i literally had no music no podcasts nothing on for the like two almost two and a half straight hours of me in the car because i was like trying to focus so hard well, we're fixing the music and the backup camera thing hopefully soon Best Buy finally has the sale that started um, this week. So um, <laughs> that's a side note. But um, just to finish this off before we get into the story and everything, how did you do? Um, I did really well. And I have Remington to thank for that. My pony did amazingly well. I wasn't fighting him like I usually do when we go to that specific complex. He really doesn't like the way it echoes in that indoor it was like an it's like a it's a covered arena which is a shame because honestly because it's so, such a nice arena it's a really nice arena and he's always <coughs> an ass and i wish it was a little bigger because it was a little bit bigger i i kind of i assume me i like prince george's i really do i do too i have a lot of fun memories don't from like there to drive, but. no but do you like to drive to the pa one either like no because it's further yeah so you just don't like driving but the point is prince george's is a very nice place and it sucks that you can only do Paris competitions there it's so because of the size. But yeah. still, it's a very gorgeous place. It's very gorgeous. And I love that they do Paris competitions there. Um, <laughs> and for the people that actually reached out, yes, Charlie's still alive. Um, for the people that don't know, he basically, uh, it wasn't floundered. That's the first word. He foundered. Floundered. He, he kind of he, co- he kind of colicked last week. It was a colic. It wasn't a kind of colic. Yeah, but I'm saying like, 
The reason I'm saying it's a kind of colic is because, for the people that don't know, it wasn't a full-on, he was dying colic, put a bullet in his head. It was a, I'm fat, I'm a fat person. It was a mild colic. Would you agree with that? It was a mild colic. Yeah. Yes. Uh, apparently, when you give him hay and he hasn't had hay in about a year, he just says, like, this is how I'm going to go. When you give Yolo. him free choice hay and he hasn't had free choice hay in about a year, he forgot to breathe. What <laughs> mo- moderation was and ate himself into a coma like somebody going to a buffet and eating so much food that they have to be rolled out of the buffet. Literally, I found him in the field, flat out on his side, eyes closed. I thought he was dead. I was screaming his name, Charlie, Charlie. And he all he doesn't even lift his head up. All he does is open his eyes and look at me. I was like, oh, no, this is so bad. I'm like, I have to, like, push him to get him to stand up. And he's just like, oh, you're so annoying. And, like, grunts to stand back up, okay? But then he just, like, puts his head down and, like, walks a couple steps away from me. Because he's like, you're really annoying. Leave me alone. And then, like, lays down again and, like, starts to roll. So, like, just, like, let me die. At, yes. And at 6 p.m. at night, I'm like, welp, guess we're calling the vet. And then I walked him in circles for the next 45 minutes till the vet got there. Then, turns out, it was a mild colic. He didn't even have a raised heart rate. So Tons he, of he, movement. He, 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 he was just fat. He was just, he just was uncomfortable and taking a nap. And now it's, we have hundreds of dollars of vet bills to pay because it's funny. Charlie ate himself into a food It's coma. funny because he survived. Yes. It's funny because it wasn't bad. It was funny because of your reaction. It's funny that it's literally because he's just fat. Like that makes it more funny because he's a fat pony to begin with. He, when he wins sprints, it looks like a goose trying to chase you down the he parking waddles. lot. He waddles. He waddles. He's, he's a fat guy. half gated. Yeah, and so the fact that, that he help. literally just ate himself to death and laid down, just like this is how I go. I'm fine with that it. That doesn't help at all. <laughs> just him laying there in the dark, <laughs> on his swollen belly, his swollen bloated belly, laying there, looking like a dead pony. I'm screaming his name, and he just goes. Just, oh, and for you guys, like you should just open your eyes. Like yeah. he just looks at me and blinks, like what. So he's going to be fun to ride. He's going to be a lot of fun. Val, if you're listening, um, please, please reach out. We'd like to hook up with you, maybe do some kind of like synergy and get you to ride my pony some to get this guy to uh, lose some weight. I think he would enjoy it. Uh, no, he wouldn't. I no, would enjoy it. No, he wouldn't enjoy <laughs> it at all. What are you talking about? That's Charlie's version of torture. So, yep, we got a Christmas trail ride coming up. Can't wait for that. Um, but, yeah, that kind of gets us. We're big into ponies here. Oh, really big into ponies. Um, so I just thought we'd get, get a little catch up on that because we haven't actually gotten to do a little equine catch up lately on the show. I think we haven't done one in like a while, actually. We haven't talked um, about um, your, what is it, equestrian lifestyle in the past probably like four or five episodes. Yeah. But since we have more um, equestrian listeners nowadays, <laughs> I just thought, <laughs> hey, it's a bat and plachette. So. I cannot handle your pronunciations. Oh, guess what, guys? It's going to get a lot worse because no. finally, no. after months, Tommy's back at no. it, baby. Tommy gets to read a story. <laughs> He's, <laughs> He's allowed to read words again. But before we get into today's Christmas festival story. <laughs> Ask me the question. Carly, what are we drinking tonight? Tom. It feels so right when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the news anchor of the hook, and this is like the thing that gives me purpose. Okay, well, tonight we are drinking hot chocolate, but it is called spiked and spicy hot chocolate. Mm. Let me tell you what I put in my hot chocolate this evening. I put chocolate milk Mm. warmed with our, it's right here on display, by the way. It's called double chocolate vodka. I added a sprinkle of cayenne pepper, a dash of cinnamon, a pinch of salt. Oh, Lord. He just took a big old gulp. It tastes Straight weird out. by itself. Okay. Um, let me finish. A pinch of salt and also a pinch of ginger. Stirred it up together and grated milk. Hershey's chocolate bar over top. 
Mm, it's spicy. It's warm. It's delectable. I like it. And honestly, usually I'm like, if it's sweet, uh, I'm going to say no thanks. Tonight, it's hitting just right. It is hitting just right. Um, And then we have one announcement, uh, kind of an announcement that we're trying to do. We do? But I'll I'll let you guys know at the end that we're something we're going to try to do over Christmas break. Because Surprise. We both have a little bit of time. Um, It's not really like. It's not that big a deal. I think it's a little bit of a big deal. So anyway. It's a surprise for me, so that's exciting. Yeah, that's how we jump these surprises because like I'm assuming like there's a massive audience behind the camera and yeah. they're like, Oh, whatever. But I don't know that, so I just don't tell my wife what the surprise is. Yeah, so literally the every single face. week he's like, I got an announcement and I'm like, hmm, news to me. Yeah. But uh, uh, now I can bounce it off you based on your reaction. I know probably how our Bree fans actually feel. Oh. So <coughs> I found this story. <laughs> I didn't know a segue, so we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna roll with it. Um, you know, keeping with the Christmas theme, which has been honestly, guys, I'm sorry, it's been really received well. I thought when I talked to you about this, Carly, like, all right, there's no way people. I really thought, no. like, oh, but people really enjoy like Christmas themed stories. Yeah, which is crazy. You know, some you know how we are about Halloween. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people out there that feel the same way about Christmas. But ghost so. stories around Christmas and the spiritual sense of Christmas. What's interesting, by the way, in our research, because there's another episode that Carly gets to do with it again this year. I'm not going to tell it. No spoilers. Bum, bum, bum. But when you look at the Europe, too, their the Europe? Interp yeah, the Europe. There's Ooh. only one. Um, the one and only. Their interpretation of Christmas when it comes to like the spiritual stuff and the ghosts and stuff is very interesting. So over here, we're more holly jolly, blah, blah, blah. Over there, they're like, yeah, it's very Halloween-esque with mm -hmm. their idea of like spirits being alive on Christmas Eve. Their all folklore. Eve. Yeah, their folklore. Um, you know, you were listening to something that we're not going to spoil it today. It's like, yeah, it's very Shh. different, isn't it? Like comparatively. And that's kind of important because it kind of ties into today's tale that I'm going to be, be telling here where it's about maybe All Hallows' Eve is not the only Eve of the year that really connects our world with the other one. Mm. Time now for the tale of the Christmas Ouija board. No. No. Yes. Four Ouija boards. This is a good one. All right. I hesitate in telling this story because I don't want to contribute to the Ouija board stigma. It's a board with letter, letters painted, stamped, stenciled on it, the same way Hasbro would make them. It's not a portal or a gateway, and nothing lives inside them. Furthermore, being an intimate and inanimate object, it can't emit energy through the board or anything like that. I was given my first Ouija board 10 years ago for my 13th birthday by what? my crazy uncle. Ew. Hey, you know what? He's got that uncle jam. in jail. Okay, well, everyone knows her thought in the whole Ouija. <laughs> for some reason, he liked to give odd things to me for my birthday. By the way, did I mention that my birthday is four days before Christmas? Later that same week, on the same year, I got my Ouija board. A group of friends, uh, I had a group of neighborhood friends come over for the Christmas Eve block party that my family liked to throw every year. Ooh. The adults were downstairs drinking and talking, you know, boring stuff. So we went upstairs to my room to hang out. We didn't know what we wanted to do, so we just hung out and chatted. The two girls in our group were snooping around in my closet and spotted my Ouija board. They came out all excited and asked if they could try it out. I said, yeah, sure, whatever, I don't care. One of the girls sat down with her fingers on the pochette. She asked the board, oh, by the way, guys, I think I spelled that correctly this time. Oh, pochette? Pochette? No, no, no. Just get them through the story. God damn it. I thought I was doing good. She asked the pochette. <laughs> God damn it! This was the best I ever, I was reciting this in the shower to myself, and then on my way to the gym, I kept reading this story to me, he's like, Plachette, Plachette, you got this, Tom, you can do this, you can do this. Anyway. Don't make me do this again. The one girl who sat down with her fingers on the Plachette, she asked, stop it. Please, everyone in chat, everyone uh, watching, please back me up on this. It is Plachette. The one girl sat down with her fingers on the Plachette, 
she asked the board a question. Does Stefan, a cute boy in her class, have a girlfriend? The board didn't give her an answer. This is where things became weird. The other girl sat down, placed her hands in the pochette, and asked if she could speak to her grandmother. <gasps> she missed her terribly, this being the first Christmas without her. The board piece didn't move. Defeated, she got up to walk away. It's at that moment our blood ran cold. The pochette slowly moved and pointed to yes. <gasps> then the pochette started to do a figure eight, slow at first, and then gain momentum. Then it stopped. The girl got back down to her knees and asked, Grandmother, are you present? The piece slowly moved and pointed, yes. Then the board spelled out, I will always love you. <gasps> With tears in her eyes, she gained the courage to speak, and she muttered, Grandma? Grandma, I have so many questions for you. Then suddenly, the rocking chair across the room began to rock, all by itself, back and forth, back and forth. And then it slowly gained speed, faster and faster. We all screamed and trampled off over each other, trying to get out of the room. We busted through the door and ran downstairs to where all of our parents were. They asked, what the hell's the commotion? None of us had the courage to muster that a board game made by probably Hasbro scared the crap out of us. And then a, my rocking chair in the room started to move back and forth. But later that night, all of us had nightmares. Of course, looking back, I think we exaggerated just a little bit. We did hear things and we felt things that scared us for weeks. About a month later, we tried to use the Ouija board again, but we never had an encounter. To this day, I believe it was the power of Christmas that allowed the board to contact the other side. And that is the tale of the Christmas Ouija board. You know, what teenage boy has a rocking chair in his bedroom? I think that's what you take away from it. That's literally the biggest question on my mind right now. I think he's probably has some family issues. Um, probably maybe too many kids. I mean, clearly, you know, this was a nice, short, sweet, to the point story. There wasn't like a huge epilogue detail of every 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 person's background. Um, Which I, I could appreciate. Actually, what I appreciated from it the most was that it was another story in Tom Team Ouija Board that was kind of sweet and it almost wanted me to want more mm -hmm. kind of the way you know midnight mass did the opposite for me oh no oh, um no. which here is a show go. that i uh -oh. hated he starts here we go everybody well <laughs> spoiler alert we will get into midnight mass later on another topic or another me and not stream Mias. um but yeah like i just it was a good palate cleanser to me like when i saw the story i was like you know what that's nice it wasn't like the devil grandma no no it was just her her grandmother passed it was christmas eve a year from it and she talked to her i still love you and they all got scared and ran out of the room because of the rocking chair probably was grandma sitting down on a chair the end okay cool i like you know what sometimes it doesn't have to be like multi-layered and i really appreciate that about the story that maybe not all and this is something else that's interesting to me when we first started spirits and ghost stories that i really got into they're not always bad Mm -hmm. Like, that's something that's interesting that I feel like. Like, ghosts are not always bad. However, ghosts from Ouija boards are bad. They're demons. Except when they use that to contact the girl that was murdered to find her killer. Or, <laughs> in this situation, when it's the grandmother just having to tell this daughter, I still love you. So, just saying. Like, not, and I get it. I would rather be stuck with a Ouija board than Robert the Christmas doll. Or the in-laws, one of the two. By the way, vote on Team that. Robert. Actually, yes. What happened with that? What do you mean? You had a vote, right? Yeah, most votes were in-laws. Really? Yep. That's shocking. Yeah, you shouldn't have added that as an option. I thought total it... cop-out answers. Is in-laws? Yep. What was the What was the breakdown? Like, like a lot. Like, 
like literally all the answers were in laws, except for one that was Robert the Doll. So we need to find out who that person is. <laughs> anything, they were on my side because no one said Ouija board. If we ever get to the point where we have 100 downloads on one episode in a week, mm -hmm. we will consider I will do a Ouija board by myself. That's fine. If we get 100 downloads in one episode in a week, that'd be awesome. <coughs> because I think like we need to get rid of some of the superstition. I think the Ouija board is, I think in of itself is whether it's demonic or whether it's just a gateway. It's demonic. I know. So we don't need to find please, out. Everyone, what help it is. me out in getting Miss Bird oh, no. on Team Ouija mm -hmm. Board that we should actually use this. We or, are not summoning a demon to this house. I How will many get, times I, do I have to tell you? I, we won't do it in our house. We'll do it in Seth and Kayla's house. Okay. Does that work? Seth, Kayla, thank you so much, by the way, for listening. Um, <laughs> that was a good story. I really like that. Shout out. It was short, sweet, to the point, which I feel like gives me an open door to mm. Burns. tell you about something that. I researched recently mm. that I found very, very interesting about the holidays. What'd you find? It is story time. <laughs> I just snorted vodka. <laughs> Why do you keep doing that? <coughs> because you put guy and pepper in this, and I personally, guy, like it's a really good drink. I just personally, can't, it's a sprinkle of cayenne. Pepper. I can't handle cayenne pepper. I have a very sensitive palate. No, you don't. Story time with Gryla and the Yule Lads. Okay, what is this? What the hell are you doing? Um, bonus episode, guys. We got some bonus content I think here. This explains itself, so we're just going to get started within it. This holiday season, as we deck the halls in reds and greens, tie mistletoe above the thresholds, and as the hearth fire transforms the Yule log into a bed of coals, never forget that Gryla and the Yule Lads might be lurking in the shadows. After all, there's a shadow side to everything, especially during the dark months, and even more so leading up to the winter solstice, the longest night of the year. That's pretty cool. But lucky for us, Gryla and her ba band of winter tricksters fear the light. So before I go on, make sure your hearth fire is lit and your teacup is full. It's time for another vid winter. Midwinter Wid Mid story. Damn it. I was supposed to get all creepy. Deep in the Icelandic mountains, far from any town or city, lives a witch known as Grilla. Grilla is a giantess who rarely leaves her cave. A hermit, yes, but she doesn't live alone. She's a mother to her 13 boys and her beloved Good Lord. familiar Yule Cat. Both Grilla and the Yule Cat have peculiar tastes. Instead of eating roasted pig and sipping on homemade wassail, like many of us do during the cold months in Iceland, they fancy a hearty stew, one with a special ingredient, the soul of a child. Whoa, okay, hold, 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 hold on. Let's just pause, pause. No, so Grilla mm -hmm. has 15 kids? Thirteen sons, mm -hmm. and the cat. His name is. It's the Yule Cat. Yule Cat. What is a Yule Cat? Why? What the U fuck's a Yule Cat? L E, like Yule Tide. Yule logs. It's Christmas. I don't know. Why are you asking me this question? I haven't gotten through the thing. Continue. No, it's just just context of the story. <laughs> so many questions. Hopefully, they'll be answered for you by the end of this. <laughs> That's a great thing for the teacher to say. You know, hey, hope, hopefully, like the book Once I Once I get through the questions. curriculum, hopefully all your questions will be answered. Otherwise, don't ask me. What do I look like? The teacher? Next. <laughs> if you immediately think of the evil witch from Hansel and Gretel, you are not alone. The archetype of the bewitching crone who feeds on children is nothing new. But Grilla's unusual eating habits are likely more of a compulsion mm. or even a punishment than a desire. For many solstices ago, when Grilla was a mortal witch, she fell on hard times. There was a great famine during that year's winter solstice, and the families within her small mountain community were starving to death. Wow. Heartsick from watching her beloved ones perish. Grilla and another witch from her coven made a pact 
that they would survive by any means necessary, even if that meant eating their children. Oh. Grilla went first and cooked her only son in a stew, but after they finished their meal, the other witch broke the pact. She refused to murder her child to ensure their coven's survival. Grilla was enraged, not only with the other witch, but with herself as well. She score scoured the mountainside, looking for the spirit of her son. But when, but it was only when she reached the nearest town that she heard the unmistakable melody of children laughing. Like many shadow spirits, Grilla fears the light, so she looked for the houses without twinkling lights and smoke hmm. billowing from the chimney. If there was no smoke, she knew that there was no Yule log to protect against unwanted visitors. Mm. It was these homes that Grilla would visit late at night, searching for her son or naughty children without the protection of family. The Yule cat would tag along, of course, but she was only interested in poorly dressed children, specifically those who did not receive a new outfit for Yule, which is like the holiday tradition. I love that. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, there's this cat. Oh, my God. It didn't. Look at that outfit. He didn't get a new pair of socks this year. Gobble, gobble. He has. He wears <laughs> three or four things on one bracelet. He wears a little handkerchief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He struts. Today, Grilla rare, rarely leaves her cave unless she is summoned. However, her 13 adopted sons, the Yule Lads, are more active than ever. It's unclear whether the Yule Lads are the spirits of the children that Grilla has previously stewed within her cauldron, or if they are simply lost souls that she's adopted into her family. But either way, Grilla the Yule Lads are unwelcome guests during Yuletide season. They won't kidnap children like their mother, but they will make messes, misplace items, break things, and cause mischief in and around the home. And once the Yule Lads find their way into someone's house, usually by sliding down a chimney that lacks a burning Yule log, mm. they are nearly impossible to get rid of. Because the Yule Lads are expert at hiding, the only way to ensure that they are actually gone is to summon the only one whom they will listen to. Their mother. Their mother. Grilla requires an offering, if you can call her down from the mountain to fetch her boys. Treat her with respect and dignity. She is, after all, the queen of the winter solstice. Mm. If Grilla accepts your offering, she will gather up her Yule lads and head back to her cave, where the happy family will hibernate until the following winter. Our story ends here, dear readers, but I want to leave you with one last thought. While it would be easy for us to write off Grilla as nothing more than a wicked cannibalistic witch, if we look closer at her story, we see that in many ways, Grilla is the flesh and blood representation of midwinter. Mm. Historically, the height of winter was the most difficult time of year. If humans didn't store enough food or wood to last them until spring, starvation was a very real possibility. And even if our pantries were full, tragedy could still strike in the form of illness or catastrophic catastrophic weather yeah so while Grilla, the yule lads and the yule cat share sinister secrets that complement and even darker history we hope that their stories serve as a reminder to look out for the lonely the weak the young and the elderly during midwinter and beyond that was my story that was better than mine <laughs> So a little bit of history that goes <laughs> yeah. along with this story is that children in Iceland will be told that you better be good or um, you have to get a pair of socks or some clothes for Yuletide or for Christmas. Yeah. And if you don't get extra clothes for Christmas or for the season, then the the cat will eat you, basically. The Yuletide cat will gobble you up or Grilla will come with her 13 mm -hmm. sons and there's it's so much more this is so much deeper actually because each son is actually a um a mythological troll hmm. that each has their own personalities and their own things that they do i think oh, i can't one troll 
their names are very very funny one troll likes a spoon covered in batter like all the time like he he goes for like cookie dough or something and that is a very specific superpower and the only like, reason yeah. i remember that is because i love like that part of cooking cookies is just the batter only like i like raw cookies better so than her cookies. sons are just to annoy the shit out of you basically, basically yes and they just do a bunch of annoying stuff and they'll steal stuff and they'll misplace things but um they're not as scary but they are considered trolls mm -hmm. the cat however is the one that actually eats children so children are told to be very good or the cat will come eat them what I love about this story so much is like there are two there are two sides to it. It's like one is like you have this witch that is an allegory for the harshness of the weather. Yes. And things that are uncontrollable. And the fact is like, you know, if you don't repent the sin to the witch, you know, you could lose your life. Mm -hmm. But then you look at the, the real life take on that is if you don't store for winter correctly, you know, you could die. There's some real complications. And there. there's like there's so much interwoven lore with that. Yeah. Then you have a cat. I know. And if you don't dress well, I'm going to eat you. And it's like, what the hell happened? That That's where I want to know. How the hell do you have this witch that's really cool in depth? It's like, and then you have the fashion police. It's like, yeah, also. No, the cat <laughs> actually. You dress like shit. The cat actually is a representation of um, the homeless and those without things. Typically during the winter months or the cold times, if they don't have enough clothes or they don't have a place to stay, then they're typically the ones to go. Gotcha. So it's more about what would happen if you didn't have a home that you the cat would get you. Yes. Not like this is how we take care of the homeless population. It's mm -hmm. just by having a murderous cat eat them. It's just saying like the cat is the representation of what happens to people who don't have the the necessities for survival. To survive the time. Yeah. That's a really cool story. That is a really, really good story. Thank you. Um, again, guys, this will all be linked in the episode description. Um, oh, yeah, my uh, his announcement, my announcement, please my announcement. tell us more <coughs> over Christmas break. We're gonna try to the best of my technological ability to do a live stream. We talked about it uh, a couple episodes back. We're trying to figure out how we're gonna do it with our studio. We might have to do it actually, and you guys all get to see our living room. Um, but one thing we might get into more maybe is you know, this mythology of Iceland. Where what we'll do is we'll react to YouTube videos, um, scary YouTube videos. So we get all cuddly on the couch or we get set up here in the studio. And then, yeah, we just live stream our reaction to certain things we find on the Internet. Really cool stories, mythology. Um, it's just going to be a beta test. Hopefully it's not going to be like this. It's not going to replace any episodes or anything else. This will be extra content we do over the Christmas break season just to see how people take it. Maybe it's something we can do. Maybe not. It's like a Friday night fun thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. We have a, some cold drinks, warm drinks, depending on what we decide, um, some popcorn. And yeah, let's just try it. See, see what people think of it. All right. That sounds super fun. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Because like that stuff got me interested. Like, wow, I would like to know about all of his her children and what they like. I could just read about it for days. Literally all of the, the mythological yeah. information and like where it comes from mm -hmm. and, and what it's evolved into. It's yeah. Really cool. like it, that sounds like really, really cool. And it really just goes with everything that we're doing. But yeah. Anyway, Carly, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And that means week 20, five months is in the books. Yes. Guys. We did it. I hope you have a great lead up to Christmas. Uh, then the next episode, episode 21, is going to be a special, super special Christmas edition Yep. of Spirits and Ghost Stories. So until that time, my name is Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Carly Bird. We'll see you next time on Spirits and Ghost Stories. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>